The gripping documentary series True Crime Story, It Couldn't Happen Here, returns for season two as Hillary Burton Morgan travels across America to shine light on small town just injustice and how major crimes impact these tight-knit communities. Take a look. All these years later, what stands out to you about what you saw that night at the scene? Right after I left and went, went down to the scene, someone walked into the sheriff's office, Mark Abbott. His report was there's a girl been shot and I think she's dead. But later, this person comes back to the scene. He said, I'm the one that turned this in. I'm the one that went to the sheriff's office. I'm not law enforcement, but that seems really strange. Yeah. And host and executive producer Hillary Burton Morgan joins us now. <laughs> Welcome back. Good to Thank see you. you. So listen, so do you advocate for many causes, but when did you remember when you first saw kind of this happening in small towns where you felt like, I need to step in? Well, I mean, I'd gone to college for this subject matter, and so it was something I was always passionate about, and my career took a left turn. And so when I moved to the Hudson Valley, I wrote a whole book about how much I loved my town, and then... The Nikki Adamondo case happened. It was a young woman who was a criminalized survivor of domestic violence, and she was spoken to horribly by the judge, by our local media, by the district attorney, and I was really troubled by the way she was portrayed in our community. Yeah. And so I knew that this was happening all across America where people weren't getting the advocacy that they necessarily needed. Yeah, so you decided to step in. I, so the first season of the show was hugely successful, yes. not only on TV, but you also helped free a man who was wrongly imprisoned for 23 years. Yeah, Devanya Inman in Georgia. The Georgia Innocence Project was incredible. They came in and, and really pushed his case along, and our episode aired at the exact same time. He was having very important hearings in his case, and so it was perfect timing, and he yeah. was released during the holidays and got to go home to his parents, and that was really meaningful, and so, you know, you want every episode to end say, that way. I'm assuming that's the goal of this show, is to for more things like that to so happen. So much of true crime is just telling a story that yeah. was scary, right? And right. our show is all about stories that actively need advocacy. So you yeah. can get involved with every one of our episodes. Yeah, so where are you heading in season two? Season two, oh gosh, we're in Missouri. We got to go to North Dakota. We spent time in Alabama, in Mississippi. I mean, we were all over the place this year. And the same theme rings true everywhere. These are beautiful communities. These are wonderful people. And unfortunately, when there's darkness, bad things can happen. So we're here to shine a light. Yeah. So how do you think like small town crimes differ from crimes in big cities? Do you think that a lot of things kind of go unnoticed in smaller towns? I think if there's not as much media, so the death of local newspapers is super problematic. Yeah, right. And if you don't have a media spotlight, how do you get help? How do you get attention? Right. So that, yeah, I mean, that's been a really troubling trend. Yeah, so the series shed, sheds a light on six cases. Mm -hmm. Then you have a podcast that goes yeah. even deeper into those six cases, yeah. right? Well, I mean, you know, when you're doing a television show, there's only 42 minutes of information. Right, and there's you so can much more stuff that you have. So much yeah. more context. And so we did a deep dive podcast where we focused on two cases, one in Texas, one in North Carolina, that still need public interaction. And right. we're seeing huge movement in our Texas case. So, yeah, I'm curious, too. Like, are you being inundated now with requests? from people saying, please come to our small town? You, you know, because it's not being reported by local media and because law enforcement's never going to tell on itself, yeah. what we're finding is that people are just DMing me. It's like, hey, I need you to look into this case that happened to a friend of mine from high school, yeah. or this is my cousin, will you please show up? And we have a wonderful research crew that does their homework, and we get to go to places where people really need us. Yeah, well, you advocate for a lot of things, but also you advocate for the arts. <laughs> um, you hosted a fundraiser for the theater in Rhinebeck in I New did. York, where you live, and your daughter got up and sang for the first she time. Did. I mean, is there anything that you can, anything to prepare you for seeing your child do this for the first time? I think I would just cry the entire time. It was time. so, <laughs> the very the very first play I ever did was The Sound of Music, and I sang Edelweiss. I was Gretel. And so my <laughs> son does theater at the Rhinebeck Performing Arts Center, and we did a b benefit for them. And my little six-year-old was like, I want to get up and oh sing. Oh, my God. And so she sang that. a Sound of Music song. Oh, my God. That's really so nice. fantastic. So different than true crime, and you need stuff like that. Yeah, it lightens everything. <laughs> it lightens everything up. All right, well, true crime story couldn't happen here. Returns to Sundance TV, AMC Plus, and Sundance now this Thursday. Sundance now this Thursday at 10 p.m. Hillary, thanks so much. Thank you.